Hello. Thank you for coming back to the third March meditation class. Um, last week, we discovered um, pranayama. And this week, we're going to take it a little bit further. And if this is your first time, my name is Jill. And um, I was with the Boise Fellowship, but now I'm out in the East Coast. And teaching meditation classes. I'm a yoga and meditation teacher. So um, pranayama is the conscious and deliberate regulation of your breath, replacing the unconscious breath um, with a different pattern of breathing or breath control. So um, last week we did the alternate nostril breathing. So we were inhaling and exhaling out each nostril um, that was controlling our breath. This week, um, we're going to do another pranayama, but we're going to use counting techniques. So I'm going to teach you a couple of different things. I'm going to teach you a four-part breath, um, and I'm going to teach you ujjayi breath, which is the yogic breath that we use in yoga. Um, we also um, can call it ocean breath, or for those of you Star Wars fans, it's Darth Vader breath. Um, we can use it during um, meditation. It doesn't have to just be in a yoga class. But first, I want to ask a question. Why are you trying to learn how to meditate? Why establish a meditation practice? So just think about that for a minute. There's a lot of reasons to begin a yoga and a meditation practice, but I'd like to add an additional reason today. Um, there's another benefit and I liken it to yoga off the mat. That's what we call it. It's when you, when you take your yoga out into the community, to the grocery store. Meditation, off the cushion or meditation out of the closet or medita meditation off your favorite chair. The reason why um, it's very beneficial to um, have a, a very serious meditation practice is because of the benefit that you get from the practice. So um, like I say, there's lots of reasons why um, it slows down your heartbeat. It um, it uh, helps you create a stress-free environment, allowing for more happiness and creativity. It also helps helps you cultivate a clearer mind and a more balanced life. But when you can incorporate meditation off the cushion, it's even more amazing. So I want to read to you. I have something here from Thich Nhat Hanh. He has a book um, called Anger, Firing, excuse me, Wisdom for Cooling the Flames. He says, it, need, it needs only one conscious breath to be back in contact with yourself and everything around you, and three conscious breaths to maintain that contact when you, when you bring your awareness back to that breath, that very first um, uh, breath awareness meditation we did in the first video. We will transform from a sea of fire or a lake of fire into a refreshing lake or the kingdom of heaven or the Holy Spirit. Then not only do we stop suffering, but we also become a source of joy and happiness for many around us. Your anger is like a flower. In the beginning, you may not understand the nature of your anger or why it has come up. But if you know how to embrace it with the energy of mindfulness, it will begin to open. After 10 or 20 minutes, your anger will open itself to you and suddenly you will see the true nature of your anger. It may have arisen because of a wrong perception or a lack of skillfulness you need to sustain, sustain your mindfulness for a certain amount of time in order for the flower to open, the, the flower of anger to open to itself. Your anger in the beginning is raw, but if you know how to take care of it, then the negative energy of your anger will become the positive energy of understanding and compassion. 
you can do it. It's not something that only a great being can do. You can do it too. Many of us can do this in just 15 minutes. The secret is to continue the practice of mindful breathing, generating the energy of mindfulness in order to embrace your anger. Embrace your anger with lots of tenderness. Your anger is not your enemy. Embrace your anger with mindfulness because you know you can take care of it. You can transform it into positive energy. So this means that when you have an established mindfulness practice, when you are meditating and bringing your awareness to your breath and you are, um, have that 15 minutes, five minutes a day, every day, you're teaching yourself to come out of a sympathetic nervous system and into a parasympathetic nervous system where you are um, a more relaxed, laid back, kind of peaceful, easygoing person, but it takes practice. So taking it off the mat means, or off the cushion, meditation off the cushion means that once you leave your quiet little solitude of, of meditation in your house, you take that with you. It's like uh, the expression that you generally don't see, an angry monk. It, it changes who you are. But how weird would it be when a monk who's enlightened goes out into society and has to stand in line at the grocery store if he, he got pissed off because the woman has many more groceries than than the checkout line says that is allowed. So we need to learn how to, in those moments when anger, for example, this one is anger, when we get angry, to bring that practice of mindfulness with us in the grocery cart, at, in our car, at, at work, um, with your children, right? Um, cooling those flames that come within us with the breath. So I also like that he says that it teaches you something when you sit with your anger and you begin to still it, you almost um, unleash a wisdom that you hadn't known before. So I wanted to give a quick example of how that has happened for me. Um, a couple of months ago, I was in a situation that I was really angry about. I was just livid. It was a very unexpected situation, something that most people would never have to really deal with in life, but here I was finding myself there and I was mad. So I found myself on the couch trying to still my heart, trying to be in my body, feeling, feeling what I was feeling and not trying to run away from it. So I was practicing a mindful uh, breath awareness. This is my inhale. This is my exhale. And as I did so, all of these things pop into my head. Reasons why I should be angry. Okay, so I'd push it away, bring it back to my breath. And then another thing would pop into my head about how she shouldn't have done this. And I'd push it away and bring it back to the breath. And then another three minutes later, I know exactly what's wrong with this situation. It was all his fault. Okay, push it away. And um, because I'm slow, it took me about 25 to 30 minutes before I was really able to stop um, those intrusive thoughts that were coming into my head and just bring it back to my awareness so that my, my body softened, my stress came out of my shoulders, my, my heartbeat came back to a normal beat. And as I sat there, relaxed from head to toe, I had the most ridiculous clarity of all time. Four times, four times was brought into my head. The first time, the second time, the third time, and the fourth time that I personally caused the situation that eventually turned into the thing that I was angry about earlier. So I had spent 10, 15 minutes pointing the finger at everybody else who, who had made that happen. And at 30 minutes, I could only point the finger at me. And I honestly think if I hadn't taken the time 
to really work through that and calm myself down and be able to see clearly in the situation. A lot of hearts would have been hurt if I couldn't have the next day apologized for my role that I created that horrible situation. And yet I wasn't humble enough to see it in the beginning. I was too angry at what had happened that I couldn't see the role that I had played. So that's what it means when you take yoga uh, meditation off of the, the cushion. It means that when, for example, with anger, when you get angry, you remember your practice, you bring it back to your practice, the breath awareness, the stilling of your heart. Maybe you leave the room, maybe you go for a walk, you do something to first calm yourself down so that you can see clearly in any given situation. So I tried to teach this to my children um, to help them get a little bit more tools in their tool belt so that they can calm themselves down. So we came up with this lovely, lovely toy here. Um, in Buddhism, they talk about how it's called stilling the muddy waters. So we created these little water bottles that have glitter in them. And as you can see, you can see clearly through that. Do you see that? You can see my eyes, you can see my nose, you can see my lips because the water's still. But what happens when we get angry on the inside? This is what we feel like, right? You can't see through that. You absolutely can't see clearly through that. So what you have to do, oops, now I'd have to hold it here. You have to let the, the muddy waters still. So obviously this goes a lot faster than mud would, but we used it for the kids to try to get them to understand that there's, see, there's still that stuff in there. There's still all of these emotions that are floating around here. The bulk of it's down here, but until all of that is cleared, until it's all out, which can take 15 to 20 minutes of your mindfulness practice, then you can start to see through the water clearly, right? the mud all sinks down to the bottom and then you can see accurately through your through your water so <clears throat> sometimes in the heat of that moment when you're upset about something the idea that you could just sit and focus on your breath is ridiculously um, unachievable i would say for most people who have anger so that's why we're going to do these counting meditations today so that it can give you a little something extra to bring your mind and your awareness to um, that is so distracting that you can give yourself that 10, 15, 20 minutes and then find that you've brought yourself back into a, um, a more peaceful state. So the first meditation that I was going to teach you is the, um, the four part breath. So in the very first video, I told you how you have, you have an inhale and then you have that little moment, that pause right before you exhale. And then there's that little pause right before you inhale again. So those are the four parts. With this particular exercise we're gonna do, we are going to um, extend our inhalation and hold it. And then we're gonna exhale. And then when our lungs are completely empty, we're going to hold it. So I'm gonna walk you through it. Um, real quickly, and then we'll try it. So bring your awareness into your heart center. Maybe you wanna place your hand over your heart and begin to feel your heartbeat. And just use that first mindful awareness of your breath, the rise and fall, the natural rhythm of your breath. See if you can bring your awareness to those four parts, the inhale, the little pause, the exhale, and the little pause. So you're probably doing some pretty shallow breathing. Maybe you have a three second inhale. Start to, start to count. How, how many seconds it takes for you to inhale. Three, 
the natural rise and fall of your breath should be around two or three times um, if you're not doing anything with it. So we're gonna pretend that we're all at a three. So I want you to go ahead and inhale to the count of three. Inhale, one, two, three. Now hold your breath right here. One, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Hold it, one, two, three. Inhale, one, two, three. Hold it, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold it, two, three, four. So that's how the, um, the meditation will go when, when we begin. Um, the idea though, in order to, um, to be this something that's really going to preoccupy our minds to focus on something, we wanna make it a little bit longer. So we're actually gonna do a five second um, breath. So we're gonna inhale nice and slowly so that we can take a nice deep full breath for five seconds. And then we're gonna hold for five seconds. And then we're gonna slowly exhale for five seconds. And then we're gonna remain with our lungs completely empty for five seconds. And then we're gonna do it again. So um, I think maybe we will do like three minutes of this so that you can um, get a feel for it. So as we discussed in the first and second video, find a, a spot in your house where you're feeling comfortable. Maybe you're on a cushion, you're in the chair, maybe you're in bed. Um, bring your shoulders up, put them down low. Maybe you want to stretch your neck out. Maybe you want to have your hands, um, your palms down on your knee. Maybe you want to actually turn your palms up. Um, we'll talk about mudras, the things that you do with your hands in yoga in another time. So just place your palms down or palms up on your knee. Um, or if you're laying in bed, um, probably your palms up if you're laying down. And then what whatever feels comfortable for you in your chair. And we will begin. So we're gonna inhale for five seconds, hold for five seconds, exhale for five seconds, and hold for five seconds. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Inhale, hold, exhale, hold, in, hold, exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale. Hold, in, hold, out, hold, in, hold, out, hold. So now just return back to your normal, regular breathing pattern, the unconscious one.
you can think about um, how that experience was, whether it was a challenge for you, whether you really liked it, whether it caused anxiety. If, if it caused anxiety for you, it's probably not the right meditation. But maybe you really liked it. You do not have to hold for five seconds, just like um, last week's pranayama, uh, the alternate nostril nadi shodhana. I said, I do mine for 10 seconds. So if you really like this meditation and you felt like you instantly were feeling relaxed, go ahead and try it for longer. You can hold it for six seconds, eight seconds, 10 seconds. Play with it and uh, see what works best for you. So that's the first meditation that I wanted, uh, the first pranayama meditation that I wanted to teach you. To. The second one is the ujjayi breath that we use in yoga. <clears throat> and so um, this ocean breath or this Darth Vader breath um, is really about, about lengthening your inhalation and then lengthening your exhalation so that you can make them smooth and even. Um, <clears throat> And, and when, you, when you're doing it, it does really sound like an ocean, which is why it's called ocean breath. So um, the first, it, it's kind of a challenging breath. So we're gonna begin with the second part, the exhale. So if you inhale through your nose and you exhale out loud, say the word ha. So that's the sound that we want to make when we exhale, but we're going to do it with our mouth closed. So what you're going to do, it's like you constrict the very back of your throat, squeezing that windpipe um, to make the same sound. So the exhale will sound like this. So let's just try that for a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. Inhale deep through your nose, exhale. So we want to do the exact same breath, only inhaling it, which is a little bit more challenging to do because you're going to do it with your mouth closed. Um, it, it really is like you're um, constricting the back of your windpipe. So um, just give it a couple of tries. It is a little bit challenging um, in the beginning. That's why we're going to practice it. So go ahead and inhale through your nose, um, making that, that ocean audible sound. In and out, try it with me. So that is the, the sound that you will hear if you ever walk into a yoga studio. It will be 20 people making that sound. Um, together in unison as they as they do their asana, the poses in yoga, the movement that goes with them. So the reason why I'm going to teach this one is because it takes a lot of mindful awareness to, to stay focused on that. And, and you'll find that when you hear yourself breathing, it's a lot easier to stay focused on your breath. So that's why we're, we're learning it here. It's not just something that you have to do in a yoga class. It's something that you can do at home as well or in your, your meditation practice. Because when you, when you bring your awareness to hearing that breath, um, it's just another thing to keep your, your, the focus of your meditation, that mindful awareness, because you're hearing it and you're breathing it all together. You're staying in your body in that spot um, and then like in a yoga class you'll find that when you're not breathing that way it's because you were thinking about your grocery list or you were thinking about how you have to pick the kids up from school today so having the ujjayi breath is is um, a really great way to keep your mind focused on, um, during your meditation so um, secondly it's not necessarily important that you're making the sound as it is that you are you are um, lengthening the inhale to be as deep as you can 
and that you're matching that same um, exhale, whether or not you're making the noise. And so the reason why we're doing this with the counting is that essentially you can think I'm going to inhale to the count of eight and exhale to the count of eight. So you're lengthening it, you're making it smooth, and the transition loops around into the exhale. And so it's smooth and it's even and it's 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 perfectly um, in harmony with this beautiful loop that you have of a long inhale and a long exhale. So if the breath, um, the making the sound through your nose isn't comfortable, you can just do a regular eight second breath in, eight second breath out. But um, that might be enough to keep your mind centered and focused, but also um, adding the the ocean sound to it helps keep your mind really focused um, on that. So we're going to do it. I don't know that I'm going to do eight seconds. Let's see. So I'll probably do six seconds for our, our first little practice. So once again, get comfortable. Bring your awareness to your, your heart center. Start to watch that natural rise and fall of your chest. And we'll probably do um, another two minutes with our Ujjayi breath. Since you're at home and no one's listening, go ahead and just try to do the Ujjayi breath. The inhalation through the nose and the exhalation. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Now, do it on your own. Go ahead and return back to your normal, regular breathing. Don't let your mind wander too far. Go ahead and bring it back to just that, that breath awareness from the first class. The natural in and out of your breath. So those were the two um, counting pranayama that I wanted to teach you today. Um, these are like the last one, something that you can do before you attempt to do your regular mindfulness awareness, uh, your breath awareness, excuse me. Um, 
to help you um, kind of still your mind before you begin the practice of meditation. Um, if that's the only thing that you can do, as in your mind is still too scattered and monkey mind, you can absolutely do these kind of things for, for five minutes, for 10 minutes. Um, we only did them for two minutes here because I wanna make these videos short, but um, you can absolutely do this for five, 10 minutes. And then I, I think you'll definitely see a difference when you go to do your breath awareness meditation, your mind will be a lot more stilled and focused. So that's it for today. Next week, um, next week is going to be on Tuesday instead of Thursday. And we are going to cover um, some chakra meditation and some light meditation. So these will be guided meditations. Um, and I will explain a little bit more about them next time. So um, thanks for coming and good luck with your practice.